Hey, hey, welcome back. I'm Todd, if this is your first time. Played a win one three session last night and I've made you wait plenty long enough for some poker hands, so let's jump right into it. It's a busy night at the win and I buy in for the max of 500. Jumping right into the action in the first orbit, we pick up pocket fives and under the gun plus one. Under the gun limps and I put in the raise to 15 for isolation and we get a call from the players in the low jack, high jack, the button, and the initial limper calls as well. So I'm thinking of a flop dealer. 866 with two spades isn't exactly what I had in mind, so we're pretty much limited to checking and evaluating, and lucky for us, it checks through. The turn is the four of diamonds, giving us a gutter to go with our boat draw, and the under-the-gun player puts in a bet of 25. There's probably a case to be made for just folding now with this many players left behind, but we could always get lucky, so I put in the call. However, the low jack puts in a surprise raise to 80. Under the gun folds, and this is almost always going to be a slow play to eight, so nothing to do but fold and move on. The very next deal, we're first to act and look down at ace-king suited. Standard open, so I make it 12, and we get a call from the low jack, the button, and the big blind. So another multi-way spot out of position. Queen Jack 10 Rainbow is about as good as it gets. We flop the joint, and now it's just a matter of extracting value from one of these players. Certainly someone in the field has flopped a decent hand, like a two-pair hand or a draw or a worse straight, so I bet half pot for 30, and they all snap fold. We pick up another playable hand in the big blind when I look down at King Queen Offsuit. We see four limps, including the small blind, and I'm looking to thin down the field and build a pot with a hand this strong. So I raise to 20, and the first limper in plus one throws in the classic back raise to 83. She only started the hand with 300, and we're always going to be absolutely dominated by the 1-3 back raising range. So easy fold and bringing today's back raise count to one. Also, she shows us pocket kings. Next up, we see the classic button limp chop blocker before looking down at pocket queens in the small blind. Mandatory raise, so I make it 15, and we get a call from both the big blind and the button. The flop is jack-10-7 all hearts, so not the best flop in the world for our exact holding. In a tougher lineup, I'd be checking this hand for pot control being out of position multi-way without a heart, but I think it's okay to bet small now to protect against hands with a high heart, so I bet 15. And the big blind puts in the min raise to 30. Against this player type, there's no real decision here, so without a heart, I just fold. A handful of players decide to call it a day, and the table dynamics quickly devolve into everyone limping every hand, mostly trapping and slow playing. And there are a handful of Russians that are sort of talking to each other in Russian under their breath during the hand, and the dealer's not really doing anything about it. So. Rather than be miserable by either winning small amounts preflop or going super multi-way, not to mention we might be battling some minor collusion here, I decide to ask for a table change and get moved to our second table of the night. First orbit of the second table and we're dealt ace-10 off in the hijack. The player in middle position limps in. I raise to 15 for isolation. We see a call from the cutoff and the button. And then the initial limper puts in the ever popular back raise to 60. Again, easy decision, we fold. We're now down to 400 already, so I add on for 100, and to be honest, I'm starting to feel a little annoyed at the way the session's shaping up so far. Anyways, nothing really to do about it, just need to keep grinding. Now that my head's back in the game, we see a limp from the under the gun player, and I ISO to 15 with 10-8 suited on the button. Probably a little wide for this game with all the multi-way action I'm seeing, but that's what I do, and both blinds and the limper call. Four ways to a flop of nine, seven deuce with a spade and two hearts. We flop an open ender and a backdoor flush draw. 
Small blind checks, and the big blind leads for 20. Under the gun folds, and the action is on us. This lead is going to be a heart draw or top pair a lot of the time at this level, and if you hadn't noticed, we don't beat any of those hands currently, so I think it's time to start a bluff and raise the action to 80. This gets the small blind out of the way, and without much thought, the big blind decides to fold as well. In this one, we see a limp from an early position player and a raise to 20 from the player in middle position. I look down at ace-8 suited and decide to come along, and the limper gets out of the way. Heads up to a flop of 6-4 deuce with two hearts. We flop two overs in the nut flush draw, and she checks it over to me. Now, we do have a lot of equity, but we don't have a ton of showdown value, so I think betting makes more sense, and I elect to go for the larger sizing of 30, and she makes the call. Off to a turn, which is the king of spades, and she checks again. It's a little tempting to bet this card, but I think this turn actually favors her range pretty heavily over mine. Plus, I'd hate to bet and be forced to fold to a raise, so in position, I decide to take the free card, and I check behind. No improvement on the river, it's the six of spades. She bets 40 pretty quickly, and we have absolutely nothing, so we fold. Next, we see a limp from the low jack before looking down at pocket queens in the cutoff. I ISO to 15, the button calls, the big blind calls, and the limper decides to find a better spot and he folds. Ace, eight, five, rainbow on the flop, so definitely not ideal. The big blind checks and we're too strong to bluff, but too weak to value bet, so I check and the button checks behind. The turn pairs the bottom card and completes the rainbow, and the big blind decides to bet $10. I think that's a fair enough price to see a river, so I put in the call and the button folds. Heads up to the 10 of diamonds on the river, and he slows it back down and checks one more time. I actually think this is a perfectly fine spot to go for some thin value and charge any pair of 10s or 8s that might get curious, but this opponent is an older gentleman who definitely enjoys trapping, I'm not usually afraid of monsters under the bed, but my spidey senses are tingling a bit. So I decided to just check it behind this time and he rolls over pocket kings, just kings, you know, pretty standard, really definitely happy to lose the bare minimum in this cooler. But I mean, I also hate everything about this. So shortly after this hand, most of the action and the money decides to call it a night and I'm left at a table full of Mr. Pocket King. So don't really want to play with people that don't have any interest in playing for more than the bare minimum preflop. So it's time to hit our third table of the session. And hey, what do you know? Our first playable hand at the new table gives us a chance at redemption when we look down at pocket queens on the button. There's a limp from the under the gun player a raise to nine from the player to his direct left, and it folds around to us. Definitely a three bet with this holding, so I raise the action to 35, and plus one decides he wants to see a flop and makes the call. The flop is nine three deuce with two clubs and a heart, so pretty safe flop for our hand overall. He checks it over to me, and at this point in the hand, I wanna play for stacks, so I size up and bet 45. Our opponent, however, doesn't like that price. He wants to play for a bit more. He puts in the raise to 125, and if you think about it, he's really only repping pocket nines for value, so I think a club draw is much more likely, and he definitely seems like the kind of player who would like to get in now and hope to hit a club. Not to mention this raise is also about 40% of his stack, so he's pretty pot committed, and almost no one check raises a flop to fold to a three bet at this level. So I put in the three bet jam for about 325, and he snap calls. He stands up and calls for a club, which is great news, so now we just have to fade one of those. The turn is the five of diamonds, so we're safe for now, but we're not out of the woods just yet. Send me some of that Brad Owen run good, and on the count of three, hit that like button. One, two, three. The river is the three of diamonds, giving us the winner against Queen Jack of Clubs, and for the first time of the day, we're in the black. 
By the way, if you like the idea of bouncing poker hands off of like-minded poker people, I have a Discord server that I've been slowly trying to build over the last handful of months. There's a link in the comments down below, so if that sounds interesting, come join us and I'll be happy to throw some feedback on your hands that you share. Back to the action, a few orbits later, it folds around to us in the hijack, and I open the action to 12 with pocket jacks. As soon as I look left to see what the cutoff would like to do, I'm absolutely horrified to see a $6 straddle on the button and realize our open is a min raise. A complete blunder. Todd, how could you be so careless to miss such a key piece of info, you might ask, and while I would never give an excuse for utter negligence on my part, here's my excuse for the utter negligence. I'm in the nine seat, and with the way the dealer is positioned, I literally can't see seat one or their stack at all, and the two seat is mostly out of my view, so unless I really make an effort to stand up, I can't really see much on that side of the table. That's my excuse, and I'm sticking to it. Anyways, the cutoff calls, the straddler on the button calls, and the small blind calls, so of all of the incorrect ways to play pocket jacks, I'm pretty sure this is the worst possible option. Unless you know you're about to flop a boat. The flop is queen, queen, jack. We flop the absolute world. Sure, we're still losing to pocket queens and the two possibilities of queen, jack. But how likely is that anyways? I bet a lindle under half pot for 20 and the player in the cutoff with about 120 left is the only caller. The turn is the four of spades, and I think it's really likely that we're up against a queen, so it's really just a matter of shaping this pot to get it all in on the river for a reasonable amount. I elect to make it 35, so she's getting a fairly good price to call off on the river if she does call this bet, but lucky for us, she decides she wants to put it all in the middle right now. Or almost all of it. I think she left like $4 behind. Anyways, easy decision. There are a lot of Queen X hands, and very few of those currently have us beat. So I go all in for that remaining $4. She calls. We see an ace on the river, and she flips over King Queen offsuit. A handful of orbits and a couple of uninteresting hands later, I look down at ace-queen suited under the gun. Easy open, so I make it 12. The player to our direct left makes the call, and the player in middle position decides on a 3-bet to 45. Folds to us, and this is kind of a lame spot. The 1-3 pool is usually just way too tight with their 3-betting ranges, so it's pretty likely that we're behind or totally dominated right now but I also hate folding a hand this strong. Not to mention, it's not a very large sizing considering the player in plus one made the initial call. The offsuit combos are an easy fold, but I think we're a little too strong to be folding these suited combos, even though it feels pretty gross. So I put in the call and the player in the middle makes the fold. The flop is queen seven five rainbow with no heart. So we flop top pair, but it still doesn't feel great. Technically, there are more available combos of ace-king than there are of aces and kings, but let's be honest, in 1-3, I'm definitely more inclined to believe he still has us beat right now. He bets 60 into 100, and it is definitely on the larger side. If he bet much more than this, something like 70 or more, I think I'd just have to be folding and moving on without the backdoor flush potential, but I elect to call this size and hope to improve on the turn. I'm pretty much done with the hand if we don't improve, though, at this point. Lucky for me, all of that anxiety and stress completely disappears into thin air when the Queen of Clubs decides to join the party, giving us trips. I just love it when a plan comes together. He has about 225-ish left behind, so now it's just a matter of trying to get all of that money in the middle, and I check it over. He makes it easy on us by betting 125, which is a little over half of his stack. He's pretty much pot committing himself with this bet, if I jam, so I make the easy check raise all in. He lets out a pretty big sigh and flips in a chip. I flip over my hand to show him the bad news and he is absolutely beside himself, turning over pocket aces, drawing to a single out. 
We avoid the bad beat on the river, scoop the pot, and I'm pretty sure I played this absolutely perfectly. Call a three bet out of position with a totally dominated hand, flop top pair with no back doors, and just get there on the turn. We take a break from the monsters for this next one. I look down at king 10 of diamonds in the hijack and open the action to 12. Cut off and button both call, so we're out of position three ways to a flop of 933 rainbow with a diamond. Not a lot going on for us, and I think I'd put in a small c bet if this was a heads up pot, but three ways I decide to check, and both players behind check as well. The turn is the jack of spades, so no direct improvement, but we do pick up some equity with a gutter to the nuts. It's a high card. We're the preflop aggressor, so this should be better for us than them in theory, I guess. And we block some of the diamond combos of the jack, so I decide to start bluffing now for 20, and the cutoff folds, and then the same player from the last hand with pocket aces calls on the button. No improvement on the river with the eight of diamonds, but we do have a 10 in our hand, making a straight less likely, and we could credibly have one ourselves, so I fire another barrel, this time for 65 or around 90% pot to put any nine or a weak jack in a really tough spot. He thinks it over for a while before folding and claiming he has kicker problems, so we get the desired outcome on this one. Folds to us in the small blind. I ask the big blind if he wants to chop, and his response is, I never chop. chop. Tough to say if this is the truth, but I look down at pocket nines. I say okay, and raise the action to 20. And then he puts in the three bet to 100, which is about half a stack. I kind of shrug and don't give it much thought before putting them all in. He snap calls. We see a run out of jack seven, four, deuce eight. And I show my hand and he shows us pocket queens. So learn from me on this one. It's not super interesting, but just don't do this. If he says he never chops, he probably always chops unless he has queens or better. So just fold, just, just fold, just fold. And with that, we have made it to the last hand of the evening. There's a min raise to six from the player in middle position. I call with ducks in the hijack, the cutoff calls, and now the button puts in a three bet, although it's pretty small, it's only to 20. Like I said, pretty small sizing, plus we're getting implied odds to set mine, so when middle position folds, I go ahead and make the call, and then the cutoff calls in between. The flop is seven, seven, six rainbow, so I'm pretty much done with the hand, but when I check, both players check behind. And then the turn is one of the better ones for us. It's the deuce of spades giving us a pretty disguised full house. I check again. The cutoff now decides he wants to take a little stab and bets 10 into about 65. The button, I think that's a silly sizing, so he raises it to 30. And now we have a decision. Raising is super strong. Calling is also super strong. Both options seem like I'm pretty much face up at this point, but with about 400 behind in the button stack, I think I'd rather just go for the Hail Mary and try to win it all again. So I put in a three bet to 125, the cutoff snap folds, and then after about three or four seconds of thinking, the button decides it's not worth it either, and we cap off a nice session with another good hand. And like I said, that's gonna do it for us today. I hope you enjoyed the hands, and if you got something out of today's session, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear what you think about today's strat chat. And that wraps it up for us. We played seven hours into the game for 675 and out for 1465. So we ended up winning right around 790, if my math is correct. If you enjoyed this, consider dropping a subscribe. That would help me and the channel out quite a bit. Plus, you won't miss any future episodes. Thanks for sticking around. 
Have a great rest of the day.